Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. Today we'll be talking about how to price your paintings and how to detach from your work. So often when I'm working with artists, they have two major challenges. The first one is they don't know how to price their work. You know, when you decide that you want to sell what you've created, how to price it. And the second one is you kind of feel attached to what you've created, it, which is a natural thing. You've created something beautiful, you value it. It's um, interesting, most often you often surprise yourself when you recognize, oh, I've created actually something great, something magnificent. So we become quite attached to our work, but there are two major things we need to understand. Firstly, when it comes to creation of the art, we need to fall in love with the process of creating it and not so much with the, the end product that was created. So. The whole purpose of an artistic expression is to fall in love with the process because that's when we lose the sense of the self. That's when we lose the sense of time and that's when we become a pure channel of whatever is being created. It's just my philosophy around it because I've recognized that um, when I'm creating, when I'm producing, uh, <laughs> when I'm, you know, painting, I just lose myself in it. And that's the most exciting and the most incredible thing about art for me and if you really love to do that people who will come across your work will experience a similar sense of love that you've experienced when you were create creating it and therefore it can have great healing effects on others like music when it's done with love when it's done with the right intention uh, a listener can feel that and um, that's the beauty behind art. So if you're wondering how to price your paintings, well, since the beginning of my art career, I've recognized that um, I, I feel a connection with my art. So I said, well, let's ask my paintings uh, what's their price. So, for example, when I had an art exhibition, when I put all the paintings on the wall, this was the, the first time I've exposed my art at the beginning of my journey. So when I had all the paintings on the walls, I've, I took a piece of paper and I've sit in front of each painting and I've asked it for a number. What's your number? And then I've started writing them down. And when it comes to this process, sometimes you may get scared because you may think, oh, the price is too big or um, whatever. But don't look at it intellectually. Just write prices down. Know that your worth, work is valuable. Know that your work is truly worthy of whatever number you will set for it. Whatever number will come to you, that's your worth. And you need to also know when it comes to pricing of your work, that there are so many options that you don't need to look at the original work as the only thing you're selling. So if you can offer things for lower prices, then you will be valuing your original work even more. And that's something I often suggest to many artists to find other options that can be available to people who want to purchase your art. And I've made a video about how to make prints of your art, for example, for really low prices, which is something incredible you can do. But firstly, when you have numbers then for your art, this is the price. So don't be surprised if uh, you will be writing down, there's a small original painting and you will come across a number like $5,000 euros. Um, it's completely fine. You know, there is no rules for how much your paintings um, are worth because art has no boundaries. Art has no rules. And there are always people who will find your work valuable. But if you don't value it, how other people can value it? If you don't value what you've created, not egoistically, like I'm the greatest artist or whatever, but just to know that um, you are channeling something here, you're bringing something unique. So you have a unique perspective of things. You have a unique um, vision for however you see life or whatever you're bringing. If your work is unique and authentic, like you're not copying some other artists, like doing the um, copies of the work of Picasso or whatever, then your work is unique and your work is authentic and therefore your price should be 
connected to this value that comes through you. And if you will do it, you will see that people will actually appreciate that. And then you also need to know that if the prices are high, you can't put or expose your paintings somewhere where people can't afford it. So you need to make sure that if your art has a big price, you need to put them somewhere where there's a more luxury to that. But um, on the internet, it can be exposed to anyone. So this is just one idea, but most important is that when you have a high price, for example, for a painting, then you can offer also options for lower prices, which can be prints of your art, which can be phone cases, maybe, you know, prints on the phone cases or shirts, stickers, uh, whatever you can come up with. And then you just offer it, you know, if you find a local um, printing company that can offer you a really low price, you can make magic with it and then just play around. See, you know, if you call some of your friends and ask them what they would buy if, um, if you would offer different options, what they would buy first. And that's how you can see what uh, people are interested the most about. And that's how you can start making first money flow. For example, when I had no followers and anything, when I've started, I've noticed, well, my friends were interested in the phone cases. So I've started making phone cases. And after that, some people uh, wrote me or some friends of their friends wrote me if I have something to put on the wall. And um, if the price of the original painting was too high, I've offered them prints, prints on canvas, prints on paper, prints on paper can be uh, offered for a lower price than the print of on a canvas because it looks more similar to the original painting. So you can play with that a little bit. And that's why it's really great if you can collaborate with a certain local printing company because you can play around this. So you don't need to order huge amounts of your prints um, before you receive your first uh, orders. You actually can order one by one if you want to. That's uh, how I'm doing. Uh, we have so many options available in our Etsy store. You can check it out. I draw my passion on Etsy. And then when we receive a certain amount of order, then we order them in the printing company and then they, they send them to our team who's shipping the prints and the art. And then, you know, the whole system is established, but we've started everything doing on ourselves. So, just know that there are so much options. If you just pay more attention to solutions and less to the problem that you have, like not having clients, not knowing how to price your work, not knowing uh, where to expose your work, there's so much of options. And if you would like to know um, what are the options, you can write down in the comment section and I can make another video just about that. Then how to detach from your work, how to detach from your work. Well, firstly, you need to know, as I mentioned, that uh, the whole process of creating a painting is what makes art special. Now, when we're living in this time of AI, uh, artificial intelligence, where, where intelligence, where you can use any kind of a tool to create art, um, we can create many wonderful things with it, but it takes away the process of creating, which builds us or makes us more skillful, makes us more sensitive to our imaginative ideas, which makes us also more, um, let's say, precise when it comes to organization of ideas that we are receiving. So, for example, if I close my eyes and you would tell me a certain story, I, I would easily see pictures of that story. That's how I'm working. And when I see pictures, then I put them together. So in my mind, I can create a painting before it's created. So it's already a creative process. And we all have this kind of gifts that we can develop in our lives. That's why I always say to, to, to practice... Um, to practice using your senses. So you can um, 
recognize what makes you unique. So for example, when I start putting this picture together, then I need to figure out how to paint it. And usually I don't know how to paint it. So I say to myself, well, I will just trust that I'm capable of painting it. And often I just surprise myself with the work that uh, has been created. And that whole process is what makes art truly interesting. And of course, at the end, when I see the byproduct, I'm kind of excited and I'm kind of, you know, attached to it. I feel like, oh, what to do with that? And now I, I don't want to t give it away. I would like to have it. But, you know, when you see reactions from people, when they see how much maybe your art means to them, then I think it's really easy to just let go of it. So if you don't expose your art to others, then you will feel quite attached to it. But when you expose it to, to people, you will notice that the reactions that um, they get while they are observing your work will remind you that it was not created for you, it was created for them. And once you recognize that your art was created for them, then you will um, more intensely fall in love with the process of creating it and it will be much easier for you to let go of it and to actually give it, to, to sell it, to give it, to provide it to someone who needs it. You also need to understand that you as an artist have a mission here and that your mission is to solve a problem that is to bring meaning and beauty to humanity. So a problem on the world is that the world is lacking beauty, the society is lacking beauty, culture is lacking beauty and meaning and colors and, and uniqueness, authenticity. That's what the world is lacking. Many artists are often lacking inspiration. So that's already a problem. And your solution can be, I feel inspired. Let's create something that inspires me and therefore my work can inspire someone else. I know my work is inspiring many people. And often we are receiving paintings of recreations of my work, which means something I've created had inspired someone else. And that just reminded that person that he or she is capable of producing something and therefore we've already solved a problem here. So the point is that you recognize that you're here as an artist to solve something. So you can be a solution to a challenge. And when you recognize that you're, you may say, well, how can I solve anything on the world? I'm just an artist. Yes, but uh, you're not just an artist. You are an artist and that is enough. That is more than enough. The problem is that in society, artists have been so surprised because people said you can't make a living out of doing your art which uh, is partially correct uh, or people will say art is meaningless or whatever because you've been raised up in a family that doesn't appreciate art. But the truth is people truly love art and art inspires us. I love music and music inspires me to paint and my paintings may inspire someone to make music. So it's a constant flow. Scientists are often inspired by art because um, science may be more intellectual process uh, so we need to uh, look at the art and listen to good music and uh, read poetry and things like that to free our mind so that's how valuable our work can be so you just need to see yourself as a valuable individual who's creating beauty and that's enough you don't need any special label like i'm this kind of artist i'm this whatever you are an artist and that's enough and once you start appreciating this gift that you have, you will start believing into yourself that actually you are providing something special. Not again in any egoistic ways, like, oh, my work is special, but just to know that um, what you create is yours and, and it comes through you and um, it can enlighten someone's life. So... I want to encourage you to expose your work more often. Doesn't matter where. If you're more interested into content creating, find an interesting way that will be maybe unique, that will be authentic, that will be uh, resonating with you and start putting it out, start exposing it. If your content is not growing, maybe that content is not interesting. Maybe you're not using all of your creativity that you could use, all the capacity that you have so find a new way, more interesting way and play with everything. 
For me, it took me a lot of time to find out what kind of content I want to create. So I've created this YouTube channel, Attract Passion, where I'm sharing inspiring stories with people uh, connected to my art. So this is already a unique package where I'm sharing my art, but I'm also sharing a story that is quite related to the art, but it's also related to our daily challenges. And a whole package makes something uh, really unique that people are valuing a lot. So you just need to find a way that will be so interesting to you that you will easily be doing it every single day, that you will actually be, wake up excited to do it. That's, I think, um, is something that um, is really important. And then when your work is not growing, there are two ways, two things to know. The first thing is that you need to stay consistent because con consistency always finds a way to grow. And the second is that if your work is not growing, then change it, upgrade it, improve it. Not to change it 100%, to jump from one thing to another, but try to improve it. Try to make it better. Try to make it more authentic. Try to make it more interesting. And you will see, sooner or later, something will go viral. Something will spark you know, interest in other people. And also physically, you know, go into, I don't know, um, call art galleries, call places where you could um, exhibit your art, um, connect with people, maybe connect with um, someone who's uh, doing podcasts and um, uh, talk with them and uh, see if anyone will be interested to expose your art or yourself as an artist. Send some emails, call some people, expose yourself, my friend, because you will see that the magic truly is when your art come uh, in contact with um, people who need to see it because that's how, like I said, what will help you to uh, let go of whatever you've created because you've created it for them. <laughs> so I hope you found great value in today's video. I'm sending you lots of love. Have a wonderful creative process producing your art. And if you have any questions, any ideas for the next uh, videos, I'm planning to make more of them here. So also follow me right in the comment section, of course, and also follow me on Instagram. I draw my passion where you can find my art gallery and attract passion where you can find daily inspiration, daily quotes. So check it out, write me a message if you have anything to say. Until next time, much love.